Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's KB5, MIQ, big boy, and a different ham radio cat up here with me this afternoon. Grandkids cat. Uh, got a, one subject we're going to talk about and one uh, social media subject we're going to talk about. Um, 75HKV brought up a good point last night that I ought to talk a little bit about some easy tips to maybe help you troubleshoot some RFI interference if you're having a, any kind of a noise level in your shack. I'm going to give you an example of a harmonic cause interference that I've that I personally have found in my career, and then we're going to talk about some easy, uh, simple troubleshooting tips. Uh, back when I was in the Air Force Reserve, uh, back in the mid-90s, my unit was one of the last units in the Air Force Reserve system that still had an HF radio mission, and I would had just got, had been in the unit long and had gotten involved with uh, helping them with that as an additional duty. We had a deployment to the Dominican Republic and actually they had set up a old school PK-232 and was actually sending HF packet between our location at Marksdale Air Force Base in Shreveport and the deployed location in the Dominican Republic. We were using a uh, Harris Pacer Bounce HF rig, an AEA PK-232 TNC. And we had a long periodic, 7 through 30 megahertz long periodic antenna up about 75 feet. And they had a uh, 500 watt amp. I don't even think we was running the amp with it. But anyway, I was out there on a TDY to Barksdale and had me in there kind of babysitting it and watching it and doing, you know, doing some radio stuff. And uh, we was having trouble making a, getting a, packet signal to go through. There was some interference on the frequency. And packet, old school packet was a uh, was a really good mode to use because it was it would make sure the signal got through. It would send it until it until it got a reception back saying yes I, I got the signal. That was the two TNCs talking to each other. There's old real ham radio cat Aaron. He didn't got in here. He don't like that other cat <laughs> anyway I I was new to the unit and then I'm still trying to learn the ropes, everything over there. And, but I've been a ham radio operator a few years and I'm saying, something's wrong here. I said, I can't figure this out because I put some headphones on and I can hear on that frequency a repeating tone like a birdie, what we call it. Well, I went to lunch and I come back from lunch, I noticed something. We were about a half a mile from the base radar antenna. Right in line with it, less than a half a mile from it. Well, I got on the phone. I called the deployed crew and Dom Rep, and I got permission to call them and talk to the guys down there. And they actually were set up on a runway in Dom Rep, and the guy said he could see the antenna from his location. Well, I had already tuned off three kilocycles either way from that frequency and got away from it. And he did the same thing. He got away from it. Problem was, we weren't off. We had to stay on that off the side frequency. But that just gives you an example of a harmonic. We was picking a harmonic up on that freak particular frequency just by bad luck off the radar. And he was having the same problem on his end. Now, if you're picking up a noise level in your house that don't sound right, whether it's a steady noise or a intermittent noise. I know Jeff is having trouble with the intermittent noise at his place. He thinks he's got it narrowed down to his to a relative next door that's running different tools. His relative repairs airplanes. A lot of time at night, he's over working on stuff and he's thinking that might be it. But in today's environment in a house, you've got all kinds of RF emitting stuff. you got internet modems, every wall wart that you can plug into recharging tablets and cell phones and everything on the sun that could be happening. So this is just some ideas that might help you narrow down that problem. First thing I will say, like I always said before, it's your shack. And if you rely strictly on asking questions on social media, 
People are going to try to tell you what they think it is, but you could end up chasing ghosts a long time before you do a few simple things at your house. First thing, put your radio on, put it on receive, on any band, check every band, see if you're getting the noise across every band. And while it's sitting there, and if you're worried about accidentally keying the mic, take the mic off the radio. You're going to only check and receive. You're not going to be transmitting through any of these tests. Unplug the right the antenna. Right then, just unplug the antenna and see if the noise goes down or goes away. If it goes away completely, you may have an antenna feed line issue. You need to ohm your feed line out, make sure you ain't got any problems there. Or it could be crossing some wire or something, or your antenna could be picking up something through the atmosphere. And you know, I don't know how you would fix that, but that's one way to isolate that out. If you still got noise in your radio with the antenna disconnected on it, next step, and this is just suggestions. I'm not saying I'm right because some expert's going to chime in here and tell you I'm telling you the wrong way to do this. This is what I would do. All right. Take a battery and take your rig off your power supply and put it on battery. And turn your power supply off. Start in the shack. If you still got the noise level, turn your computer off. Check for anything plugged in. I don't know, LED lights could cause it. You know, we got these new lights that everybody's got now. You know, check that. If the noise is still persistent in your house, that you think it's maybe in your house, leave the radio hooked on battery. Leave it on receive. If it's hot, you why why hell they get mad at you for doing this? You may have to pick when you try to do this. Go in there and turn every breaker off in your house. Right off the bat. Then turn the main breaker off. And if your noise is gone, turn the main on. Noise is still gone. Turn on a breaker at a time. Until your noise comes back. And if the noise comes back when you flip a particular breaker on, find out what that breaker's running and see if there's a problem there or something. It could be multitudes of things. You'll just have to try to do a little isolating and try to figure it out. Now, bear in mind, I'm giving you these tips because I live in the country. I don't have a house. Honestly, I do not have an occupied dwelling within a hundred to 150 yards of my house. So I don't have a problem with a neighbor. Now, if you're living in a subdivision where your houses are closer together and you're still having an RF issue, it might be at your neighbors. I don't think they'll know how to correct that. I know people will start quoting FCC rules and things and this and that. We're in modern times and you really going to try to get along with your neighbor and see if you can figure something like that out. But just a few quick tips to check and see if it's operating. And if you got an opportunity with a wire antenna, Jeff brought this up. If you can make you a portable antenna of some kind and a battery, take your radio away from the house completely if you still can't isolate it and see if that gets away from it. You may not fix the problem, but it might help you narrow it down. I know we've got a local ham here that's tried to check in our net at night and he's kind of at the limit of ground way but he's highway miles i think i'd have to look it up on qrz he's showing about 38 39 straight line miles from me and i can hear him s4 s5 with good audio he can't hear any of us because he's got a noise level and he had and i got it figured out yet you could have a problem with power line causing noise level i don't know if you can get the power company to do something about that or not but just something to think about. Try to isolate things in your house and away from your shack just to give you a starting point. Or you may end up being chasing ghosts for a long time and still not solve the problem. Got another little social media question here. This guy says, I've seen ham radio setups. Well, there are two to 12 tape radios on their table slash desk. Am I missing something? No offense, just asking. Well, 
it gets back to what I've said numerous times in ham radio. It gets back to the fact how much you want to get into this hobby, how far you want to get into it, how much money you want to spend on it, and what your expectations and what you want to get out of it. My shack right here has always been fairly simple. I've usually had a separate two meter FM radio and a HF rig. Right now I've got two HF rigs because I bought an old one that just like the first one I had for nostalgia reason, just to play with. Uh, you've got different radios now where you may not, if you're going with modern radios, you may not have to have all the radios on the desk. Now think about this. When I got in the hobby, Shack in the box radios didn't exist. You had to buy an all mode VHF radio or an all mode UHF radio. They just started out making some dual band versions of VHF UHF radios. HF radios were strictly HF. I don't remember when they started putting six meters on, but now pretty much. All of them, well, most of them got at least six meters on them, and a lot of them are shack in the box. If you're looking at a guy's setup, you need to go by what many radio, what uh, that's got a lot of radios. Look at the age of the radios. He may still be using 25, 30 year old gear. I know I had a friend of mine that was ham that was into satellites, and his first satellite setup was a UHF, VHF, separate, Yesu, all mode mobile rig that Yesu actually sold a console that you could plug them rigs into to power them up for satellite use. That was his first satellite setup until he ended up later buying, I believe, an ICOM all mode dual band pretty expensive radio. So just because you see a lot of radio and a lot of and a lot of guys collect radios. You don't have to have them all to get on the air. It all depends on what you want to do in the hobby and how much money you want to spend. So guys, feel free to email me any questions. I'll try to answer anything or leave me a comment, question in a comment, I'll try to answer it. We're at 683 subscribers. We get just a little closer to 700. I'm going to give away one of these handbooks and I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do it. I may just let you chew, tell me which one you want. I'll show what all three of them I've got. And I'm going to throw a little inexpensive soldering iron in with it for the winter. Y'all remember Main Trading Company in Paris, Texas? Uh, great place for ham radio gear. And uh, their logo will be at the end of this video. Uh, your, here are your club pages. Uh, Four States Amateur Radio, Cowtown, Dallas Amateur Radio, Shreveport, Farmersville. All good club pages for information. Facebook pages, Texas Radio Operator, Texas Ham. Operator, four state, um, ham radio flea market trading post, ham radio, amateur radio Elmers, all tons of Facebook pages relate to ham radio. Uh, we're still doing the 10 meter round table, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Friday nights. We'll be between 28, 450, and 470, generally as a rule, depending on what if the frequency is occupied. Uh, Phil, if you hear us, please check in, 730 Central Standard Time. My email's on my QRZ page. Shoot me an email if you got any questions. I appreciate everybody subscribing to the channel. This is KB5MIQ Big Boy 73.